upon me. Yes, he's upon me. He's upon me. The life of God dwells the of God of God dwells within me. 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 The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's upon me. He's upon me. And the life of God dwells within me. Yeah. <laughs> 
From glory to glory I'm moving. From glory to glory I'm moving. I'm not in the same place that I was yesterday. I'm moving from glory to glory to glory to glory. That's the story. I am moving. Yes, I am moving. Yes, I am moving. By the power of His Spirit. I am moving. I am changing. Hey, 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 hey. I am moving. I am changing. I've seen His glory. And it feels like that. I take it to I am moving. I am moving. I am changing. That is the story. His glory. By His glory. Feels like heaven. It feels like Heaven. I am moving. I am moving. I am changing. By the anointing. Please go. By the anointing. Please like heaven. I am moving. I am moving. I am moving. I am changing. Are you moving? Please go. Are you moving? Please like heaven. Are you moving? I am moving. Araba 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 Take it territories for Christ. We take it territories by the power of the Spirit. We'll take it territories by the empowerment of His Word. We'll take it territories by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We'll take it territories for Jesus. Hey. How many of you believe it? Yes, it dwells within me. Yes, it dwells within me. And the life of God is inside of me. It's inside of me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's upon me. He's upon me. And the life of God dwells within me, dwells within me, dwells within me. Let's just sing it one more time together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes, He's upon me. He's upon me. Yes, He's upon me. He's upon me. And the life of God, the life of God dwells within me, dwells within me. Can you celebrate Jesus the more? Can you celebrate Jesus the more? That was a powerful ministration from the choir. God bless you more grace in the name of Jesus. The servant of God is already here. Can we celebrate Jesus in his life? Pastor Kola Waliola Rewaji, we are glad to have you, sir. And before invite him to be blessed by his ministration. I quickly want to read his bow and as I read, I want us to celebrate Jesus in his life. Pastor Kola Oliola Rewadu is a pastor at Equip Community Church in Akure, on those states with a mandate to reach the lost and equip the saints for the work of the ministry. He is an author of over 24 books and the host of the Equip Bible course a mandate aimed at raising biblically sound ministers of the gospel, and they are all free. He holds a BSc second class upper division in political science from Makiti State University and has worked at Vince Anthony First Bank and currently at values through various local and international platforms. I believe you can celebrate Jesus the more in his life. He is the founder of Kingdom Minded Youth a campus ministry aimed at raising teenagers and youths who are kingdom purpose driven manifest character and demonstrate excellence in their various lives endeavor to the glory of god the power of the spirit is constantly made manifest as he preaches and teaches the word of god in simplicity and power is married to Abisola and they are blessed with a daughter. With Jesus joy in our hearts, I will make welcome the servant of God as he ministers the word of God unto us.
Hallelujah. Okay, it's working now. If we are doing it for Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the God of all flesh, the maker of men, the one who owns the glory, the one who deserves all of it, can we do it better and say, Jesus, we celebrate you. You are awesome in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's celebrate our, our general overseer and mommy in absentia. Let's celebrate them. Um, if they are watching, we celebrate and salute them. Let us also celebrate our daddy, Reverend Tokumbo. Abayomi. Did I get it? Huh? He laid some me, daddy. I'm sorry. Reverend Tokumbo and mommy. Please, let's celebrate them. Thank you very much. All right. Let's celebrate every leader in the house. Amen. Amen. Apologies. Amen. Let's celebrate the choir. That was very powerful. Many times, by the privilege of the grace of God, before we sit down, many times when I travel around to minister, I'm very careful. I try to study the protocol of the house. And so sometimes you're a bit uptight so that you do not break protocols. But as I came in here, there is a sweet spirit of fellowship and liberty that was ministered to me. And as the choir began to minister, that was a very powerful ministration. As the choir began to minister, the word of the Lord came to me. And I know that tonight, the power of God, the grace of God, the wisdom of God, somebody's life is about to change tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And thank you, instrumentalists. Let's just play on strings and let's worship for about two to three minutes. I like to worship. Can we lift our hands and give him praise and glory? Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. I don't know if you can voice your expectation to God tonight. Say, Father, I've not come to Mark Register. I've come for an encounter with your word and with your spirit. Lord, we trust you tonight. We trust you tonight. Let your word come to what? Vedubiki Sakabahaya. Now go ahead and celebrate his presence. Acknowledge him because you know that he's here. For where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. We give you praise.
age to age you are still the same the lamb of calvary seated upon the throne forever and ever you will reign you will return and we will see you face to face tonight let the lifting of our hands be as the evening sacrifice for unto you shall the gathering of your people be let the utterance of our lips rise as a sweet incense and as your word comes let there be utterance let there be faith imparted and let somebody's life truly be transformed tonight by the ministry of your word and the holy ghost we make room for the ministry of the holy spirit with gifts of the spirit made active and operational to the praise and the glory of your holy name in jesus name we pray somebody shout the loud most amen. amen all right celebrate jesus and please you may be seated glory to god forever all right amen so very quickly tonight i'll be teaching just flow but just bring this up very quickly tonight i'll be teaching on the manifestation of the sons of god the manifestation of the sons of god i want to trust that everybody who has mounted this place to share the word of god with us by the grace of god would have taught you know certain important things when it comes to things like these and so what i will do as a student of the bible again is to establish certain important things and then build up from there now let's quickly look at the definition of terms the definition of terms when we talk about the manifestation of the sons of god there are certain things that we must pay attention to and number one is manifestation what does it mean when you hear the word manifestation now according to scripture in romans chapter 8 and verse 19 now we're still going to do some you know proper exegetical study on that but in romans chapter 8 and verse 19 the bible makes it clear it says for the earnest expectation can we read it together and i want to go for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of god now here we see certain things but the three important things for our conference is number one the manifestation now when you hear the word manifestation the basic greek meaning is is the word the root word is apocalypsis and that's where you get some of these movies apocalypse all right and that talks about the unveiling of something that is hidden so when you hear manifest or manifestation it is what the unveiling come on let's flow together it is what the unveiling of something that was once hidden for example you do not know what is in my pocket except i show it to you now the showing of what is concealed is what we call manifestation now there is another word that we can use for manifestation it's the word disclosure disclosure for example if you put a veil now manifestation and revelation are very close if you put a veil upon this feedback speaker for example you may not really know what is there except if you are a media person and you know that what should be here should be a speaker if you found this in the middle of the at junction in the middle of the night while coming from night vigil and then it is wrapped in white cloth and palm oil you are likely going to check again and speak in tongues a little and say oh what hey maybe she giddy you know and some of those things that were heard that they put there why because until the veil is taken away you cannot be sure what is really there are we together now it says manifestation that's the first definition a disclosure the second term we will also want to look at is sons somebody say sons i like the way you're responding in church say sons now we're not going to go into a lot of nitty-gritty all right because i like to keep to time but the word sons in romans chapter 8 verse 19 it's not technon it's the word heels and wheels simply means kinship I'm, I'm going to try to explain in a way that even a 12 year old 10 year old can understand what i'm saying the word wheels is the word kinship or let's say a child somebody say a child mm -mm. somebody say a child you see when you go to first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 the bible says unto us sorry um that's isaiah uh first peter 2 9 but he are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but when you go to isaiah it says unto us a child is born and unto us 
a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And you know, many theologians have said that children are born and sons are given. But whether you like it or not, if you give birth to a baby today, you do not, if it is a male child, what do you call the child? Is he not a son? Are you here? I'm trying to make you understand that the word son here, it's actually the word kinship. And you and I know that you became a son of God on the day that you heard the message of the gospel, repented of your sins as a result of the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? And then when you repented, you believed in your heart. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Is that correct? For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession. Somebody say confession. I'm so excited tonight. I think that God wants to do something awesome in our midst. Are we together? Confession is made unto salvation. So there is no man that can be born again from his mother's womb. Are you together? There is no man that can be born again in the dream. Are we together? There is no man that can be born again because you were born in a Christian home. Are we together? There is no man that can be born again because he lives in church or around church or with pastor. Are we together? You must hear the message of the gospel. A specific kind of message. Receive it and then submit to the tenet of that gospel and then you have the gift of eternal life. So, child of God, hear me. You are made to be a child and a son by redemption. What qualifies you and I to be children of God, rightfully so, is redemption. Are we together? Very good. For example, if you look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. He says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed, by the word of God. Now notice, that liveth and abideth forevermore. A man that is born of a woman and not born again is still going to burn in hell. Because you are not born once. When you are born by your mother and your father, that is awesome. But in John chapter 3, when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, he said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter and except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are we Bible students? So that is what qualifies you to be a son of God. Redemption. And so the day you declare Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, what did you become? What did you become? Yes. I know me, I'm a child. You, you are a son. Children of God. Listen. So that we don't mix things up. Child and son are actually the same. However, when we get to the place of process, then you would understand the dimension of responsibility. But you are a son of God. See, I'm a son of God. Number three. Third definition, quickly. Definition of terms. That's what we're doing currently. So we have looked at manifestation. Is that correct? Number two, we have looked at sons. Thank you. Number three, we're looking at God manifestation of the sons of God. Now the word God here is the word theos. Now students of theology understand that the term theology itself is simply a study. All right, or the pursuit of the knowledge of God. Theos, God, logos or logic, all right, study and research in order to understand. So here he says theos. That's what Romans 819 uses the manifestation of the sons of God. And now when he says theos, he's talking about deity. So in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, he says, in the, we are Bible students in this church. I've done my research, and I know you're a Bible student. Your crossover into this month, I did it with you. Glory to God. Oh yes, if the media guys checked, they would have found at least one person following, and it was me. I did the entire vigil till we wrapped up. The choir, that was what made me fall in love with your choir. I already knew the choir before I came. They sang powerfully. 
And the prayer points were very on point, very strong, very strong. I followed everything. I can even tell you some of the prayer points. Amen? Yes, because I followed. I'm not the church member that sleeps when they are. Amen? I follow. Anyway, deity. So in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says in the beginning. Notice, it didn't say God started with the beginning. God was before the beginning began. So it says in the beginning. God, the Bible is not trying to convince you that God exists. The Bible assumes that you know that there is a being that is higher than you. So it says in the beginning, God. And the word, you know, God there, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. But you must understand that when we say theos, we are talking about God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Enter into John's revelation. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. Now don't smile at me. Quote it now. And the word was with Theos. God. And the word was God. Do you see that? The same. Because when you study Genesis, you may not find J-E-S-U-S there. Is that correct? But you see, the, the word by which the worlds were created is Jesus. For by him were all things made. And without him was not anything made that was made. Glory be to God forevermore. And then you enter into Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I'm trying to lay foundation. Are we still together please? Okay. Hebrews chapter 1. You know from verse 1. It says God. Theos God. Who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto our fathers by the prophets. He says, in these last days, what did he do? He spoke to us by his son. So, that God that spoke to men through various revelation, both general and special revelation, is God. And he's saying that the ultimate marking scheme of this creator God is his son, which is Jesus Christ. And so, we are saying, now notice manifestation, a disclosure of the sons, those that are connected to divinity. Is that correct? So if we want to define manifestation of the sons of God, we will say a disclosure of children of divinity. Or a disclosure of children of God. Very simple. You know, sometimes English language, if we are not careful, can make us confused if we do not do our research well. So it's very simple. That the child of God was designed by God to reveal and reflect the glory of God. In fact, the Puritans... In their writings, when you ask what is the chief end of man and what is the purpose of the existence of man, they will say it is to know God, to glorify him and to fellowship with him forever. Are we blessed? So we have defined terms, manifestation, sons and God. Now let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 and let's study the text briefly. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. Thank you media. For the, let's read together. Let's start from verse 16. Let's start from verse 16. Now, in Bible study, I came with some of my books, you know, I, we can't display them. I think they should be somewhere there at the back. Um, one of the books that God has helped us to write is, the Bible is not difficult. We notice that there are a lot of Christians that love God, but they have a wrong or faulty idea or imbalanced understanding of God. And because of that, when they see their Bible, their Bible looks like their enemy. Sometimes the Bible looks like a, a, a textbook that is aimed at increasing their confusion. But God will never write a letter to his children in a way that they cannot understand. God is not a wicked God. Are you here? Yes, God is not a wicked lecturer. Are you here? Yes, I'm saying when God writes to his children, he writes so that they can understand it. But unfortunately... Does not really look like it because people run away from the Bible. The only thing they do with the Bible is if, if Satan is coming to them, they put it under the pillow. But the Bible was not meant to be under your pillow. It was meant to be in your heart. And so he says, the spirit itself, because if you read verse 19 of Romans chapter 8, please give us, you are going to notice that it does not start uh, with a sentence that we can fully understand. It starts with the word for. Thank you. Now in English language, you don't start with for. Right? Because for you to say for, that means that there were some conversations that have existed prior to that time. Is that true? And then he says for. So, 
We cannot start with that because we may not get it fully. So let's look at the previous verse and see. You know, we're learning Bible study now. Look at the previous verse and see. You know, we read 19. So give me 18. Don't rush to 16 now. Now let's try 18 and see. What's the first word there? Four. So we, we are still not sure. Let's go to 17 and confirm. Maybe there is something. And. Now and is a conjunction. Is that true? So we are not sure. Let's go to 16. All right. I think this one works. The. Somebody say the. Because there are many spirits. John said that there are many spirits that have gone into the world. And so you should test every spirit. But here he says the. Spirit. And the S here is capital S. Meaning he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says the spirit itself. Now don't be carried away by the you know, typographical error. That the Bible contains typographical error does not make the Bible erroneous. The spirit itself actually is himself. Do you understand? Because many times in John, when Jesus was introducing the Holy Spirit, he will say, likewise, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Is that correct now? Thank you. The spirit himself, all right? Beareth witness with our spirit, hallelujah, that we are. Somebody say, I am. If you are not, don't say it. Later tonight, when we are done, you can say it. But now, children of God, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Remember the song that our elders used to sing? Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. And then they end it with, that we should be called the sons of God. So, I'm a child of God by redemption. He says, now, the confirmation that I am a child of God first is not manifestation. Are you here? The confirmation that I am a child of God first is not, I manifest. No, it is first the witness of the spirit. Because, listen, in the warfare of the last days, and one of the things you must understand is that it is about consciousness. It is about identity. It, it, see, your conviction, when temptation comes, temptation is, uh, temptation is an opportunity to manifest your sonship. But many see it as an opportunity to offend God. Why? Because the lack of consciousness of who you really are in Christ. And that's why Paul was writing to the brethren in the Corinthian church. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, are you in Christ? If any man, did he say, if a leader, a newcomer, anybody be in Christ, what is he, sir? A new creature. Now notice, hmm. thank you, Jesus. What is he? A new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. Now, brothers and sisters, you will agree with me that the day you got born again, there were still certain things in your life that were looking like they were still happening. Is that true? Is that true? Do you know that when you cut a leaf from a tree, I don't know if you can help me with an handkerchief. It's like the fire is. Amen. Are we together, please? Now, when a leaf is cut from a tree, does it automatically become brown? No. It takes a while. Is that true? Hello. It takes a while. Is that true? It takes a while. It looks green. It still looks, in fact, you can take it home. I don't know if some of you did it when you were growing up. You saw a beautiful flower. It was looking pinkish. How many of you did it, sisters? Amen. Very good. You see, we grew up, we grew up too. <laughs> we didn't jump up. We grew up. And then you would take it home. But on your way home, you would have squeezed it in your secondary school bag. Because there's no space. And then by the time you would bring it out, it has withered. Why? It was disconnected from the source. So yeah, it's making us understand that, listen, there is something about the new man in Christ that if he does not understand, he will be living like the old man, although he's in the new kingdom. Should I say that again? There is something about the new man in Christ that if he does not understand, if Satan uses ignorance to attack him, he will be living like the old man in a new kingdom and it's dangerous. And so the first dimension is the witness of the spirit that you are a child of God. Because there are a lot of people that go out mouthing big things. I am, I am a God. I am a chicken. I am a lion. I am a war. I am all these things. But listen, if you do not really know who you are in Christ, it does not matter how many say after me you are saying. If you do not know, you will still behave like somebody that is a slave. 
Remember Galatians, you see chapter 4 and verse 1. A, ch a, a child. And hey, as long as he's a child, differ it not from a slave. Although he be Lord of all, he will be under tutors, under tribute, until the time appointed by the Father. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. And so in Romans chapter 8 and verse 19, so, so where are we now? Verse 16 or 15? So the Spirit bears witness. Have you seen the witness of the Spirit? So child of God, hear me. Uh, don't go about asking, please, I don't know, daddy, I don't, mommy, I don't know if I'm born again, no. I'm, I'm not sure. Listen, if you are not sure, you are not yet born again. Because if you are born again, there must be what, sir? A witness of the Spirit. You will know. Like they tell you, I, say you are not born again, say, no, I, I know. However, by their fruits, we will still get there. But understanding first. Because a tree, you don't throw a tree from heaven and then it stands. The root must go deep down so that it can bear fruit upward. Are we blessed now? So in Romans chapter 8 and verse 17, let's look at Romans chapter 8 verse 17 quickly. And if children, then, do you see sons, kinship, then heirs, heirs of God. In case um, the theology that you have received is that ancestral causes are the biggest things that are happening in your life. I've come to announce to you that if heirs, then heirs of who, sir? Because there cannot only be ancestral causes if there is not first ancestral blessings. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ has redeemed me. I don't know about you, but me. Christ has redeemed me. Say it if you believe it now. From the curse of the Lord being made a cause for us. For cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing. Glory to God justification by faith and the ministry of the spirit the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles that's you and me because nigeria was not created when jesus died are you together that we might receive somebody say receive lambano receive the promise of the spirit through faith why because without faith it is impossible to please god so the blessing of abraham no 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 stay with romans don't worry about me. Just stay with Romans. And if children, then heirs. Then heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. Satan has so done a very serious job that the average Christian is only thinking about Satan, thinking about ancestral causes, and never thinks about ancestral blessings. Listen, when you came into Christ, you were redeemed from the workings of darkness. Colossians tells us, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us Glory to God. Into the kingdom of his dear son. That means that, listen, the day you got born again, you were delivered. But by prayer, you will now enforce. Do you see the balance? I'm delivered and then, but you know that they are pressing you. All you need to do is to what? Enforce the victory that Jesus already gave to you on, on the cross of Calvary. Joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, there is a concept, all right, in Bible theology that is called eschatology. Since this is a Bible church, you already have an idea. The doctrine of the last things. Now, Romans chapter 8, all right, when you get to from 16 to 19, you are going to notice that it began to say, and then even downwards, creation groaneth, the spirit groaneth, mankind groaneth. Now, if creation is groaning, what you should ask is when he says the earnest expectation of the creature, which of the creature? Is he hippopotamus? Is it lion? Is it whale? Is it tiger? Is it roco tree? Or is it human beings? Are you learning something now? Because sometimes we jump over words and ignore the real meaning. And we try to find out. Listen, the old creation. Now, creation was beautiful. When sin entered, creation, now the testimony of creation concerning God was a bit marred. And what do I mean? Remember, the psalmist said, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmament showed forth his handiworks for day unto day uttered speech are we together and night unto night showed forth wisdom now you need to understand that creation itself was designed to reveal to us an intelligent designer that is invisible does not mean his works are not seen some people are struggling with color combination but if you look at the trees in your garden, you will find out that the color, they always match. Have you noticed? There's somebody behind them. And that is God. Have you seen beautiful butterflies before? 
Have you seen birds of the air before? Now all of these are products of the creation of God. But when sin was introduced, the testimony of creation was a bit limited. And that is why, because of that, redemption had to come from Jesus Christ. Because testimony, um, creation cannot lead you to Christ. It has to be that which Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Are we learning? Verse 18. Verse 18, my media man. Are you helping me? Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Thank you. Now, one to go. For I reckon that the sufferings, now because, uh, again, you need to understand the historical context. Paul, some of you think that Paul was writing his letters in an hotel as he was sipping five alive. Or the latest Hollandia you got as he was sipping, he just said, to my children, Titus, to the church at Rome. What's wrong with you people? Then he sipped, he said, that's not what he was doing. Many times he was in the, in the prison. It was within harsh circumstances and we'll still get there. Some of you are complaining that it's lack of money that is not allowing you to manifest. It's not true. It's not lack of money. It's lack of understanding. Are we blessed? I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Somebody say the glory. That, notice, shall be revealed. Let me ask you a question. How many of you agree with me that Paul had a miracle ministry? Okay, I see some people do not agree. They say, Paul, is, did he really do miracle? He was just a Bible teacher. No. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 11, the Bible says that God wrought special miracles by the hands of the apostles, such that handkerchiefs, you know, I'm waiting for handkerchief, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from their bodies and they were rotting healings, working miracles. Why? The ministry of the Spirit. Peter, that was once timid. Thank you, sir. Peter, that was once timid. One time, he got so busy with the work of the ministry and saturated with the anointing and manifesting as a son of God that they just said, you know what? Peter does not have more time. Let's just lay the sick folks on the road. As he passed his shadow. If your shadow is healing the sick, do you think you'll still be here? Some of you would have gone to empty hospitals. Amen. Amen. Now notice, it says the glory that shall be revealed. The glory that shall be revealed. Maybe later I will wrap up with that. The glory that shall be revealed. Because John was telling us. He says, now are we the sons of God. But it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Why? You see this, your human body, alright? As a result of the workings of the flesh upon it. It cannot host the fullness of the glory of God. Now, those of you that work in the anointing. Understand that there is a level where the anointing reaches. And even your body is begging. And saying the weight of God's glory. How many of you have experienced the weight of the glory of God before a little? Now, do you know that it's not something you just say, well, I, I, I like this. Yeah, this is sweet. After a while, your body cannot host it. Why? Because again, as a result of the corruption that has taken place, mortality now must be swallowed up by immortality. And that is why we will receive new bodies. Glory be to God forever. So that's what he's talking about. That's for future time. But however, we must have a taste of it before then. Is that correct? Remember, the writer of Hebrews was writing. And then he says, who, those who have tasted of the powers of the age to come. He didn't say they drank. What did he say? They tasted. They tasted. Somebody's about to taste. Amen. Amen. Now, next verse quickly because of time. Verse 19. For the earnest. Now, read this one now. For the earnest expectation. The earnest, the yearning. The travail. Of the creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, hmm. okay, creation was subject to fertility as a result of the sin of man, and so by redemption, God now restored man's dominion mandate back. That's why when the choir was singing, you saw I jumped, I was so happy, I was excited because of the things, the lyrics of their song, very strong lyrics. I'll borrow it later so that our people too can, can sing it. I like the way they, they did it. Amen. Amen. If it's their own, I know they will give us. And redemption was God's strategy to restore man's dominion mandate. And if you remember, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have. Sons of God are not timid people. Sons of God are not scared of the enemy. Sons of God are not those who are driven by, by the things of the world. They are focused on the master. Their eyes are looking to the son of God that became son of man. 
that the sons of men might be made sons of God. They are looking unto Jesus. Glory be to God. And so let's go to the next thing because of time. Four aspects of manifestation. Four aspects of manifestation. Four aspects of manifestation. Number one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Number one, the birth of sons. I'll just highlight them. The birth of sons. The birth, that's to give birth, all right? And that's what you see in 1 Peter 1, 23. The birth of sons. How do we know that you are born in, 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 into the kingdom? As a result of the message of the gospel. When the message of the gospel is preached faithfully and truly received, sins of men are remitted. And that is why if you are here and you're a young person especially, and you're a campus person, never keep quiet. Always preach the gospel in your department and in your faculty. At every opportunity you are preach the gospel. Why? The withholding of the preaching of the gospel is the withholding of the remission of sins of men. Jesus is not going to come down from heaven to remit sins. Are you here? The sins of those that you remit are what? Remit, are you here? The birth of sons. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, how will I now, look at my age, sir. How will I go back to my mother's womb? Jesus said, are you the teacher of Israel and you do not know this? And then he explained to him. And if you remember very carefully in John chapter 1 and verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. He says, as many, glory to God. As many, glory to God. As many as what? Received him. Notice, they did what? Received him. That means that there was a time he was introduced to them. Is that correct? You cannot receive what was not presented to you except your arm robber. Amen? Amen. Received him. Just like some reject him unto their own perdition. Received him. To them, those ones. Specific, exclusive. He gave what, sir? Power. Glory to God. The day you got born again, the power of God was deposited on your inside. You are, you are not looking for special power. Are you here? You, you don't need to have so many powers. The Holy Ghost is the greatest power. Are you here? As many as received him, to them, he gave power to become authority, to become sons of God. And notice, he now says, as many as believe on his name. So, our faith connects us to our, ident our real identity, the reason why we are created. And then, with empowerment from the word and the spirit to manifest as sons of God. So, number one is the birth of sons. So, when you are born again, you are born like a baby into the kingdom. And that's why I do not agree with the idea of a superstar, in quote, a popular person in the world, a nice musician that has sang all kinds of useless, evil, wicked, demonic songs. And then now gets born again right now. And the next thing, we make him assistant choir director and chase away the former one <laughs> and then a luther starts and people say wow this is a great plus for the kingdom but listen a baby will always be a baby no matter the age when a man gets born again he needs to be educated is that correct he needs to be schooled first peter chapter 2 and verse 2 first peter chapter 2 and verse 2 as newborn babes do you see that as newborn babes desire when my wife gave birth, you know, a, a child by the grace of God, after waiting for some years, you know, God gave us the baby. I was at the labor room. When the baby came out, you know, there were some things, but God miraculously intervened. But later, when the baby was okay, the first thing the baby did, I thought the baby would just look and say, glory to God, well, I want to rest. I mean, it's been a long journey, nine months, it's not easy. The baby said, you know what I mean? What do you have around? What's going on here? Can you guys organize and just get something for the, the woman of God that is here? That scripture made sense to me when I had my own baby. Say, As newborn babes, okay. In fact, a baby is so desirous of food that because the understanding is not fully formed, if you put your finger in the mouth of the baby, the baby will suck it. The baby will not say, what are, are you playing with me? Are you not? Are we mates? Please, give me food. No, it will suck it. I am surprised. That many people want to manifest as sons of God. And they get born again and we do not see them reading their Bibles. Our fathers, because me, I like to listen to elders. They will tell you that when they got born again. Ah! Kai, 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 kai. They will sit down for days. Is that correct, daddy? 
when you got born again, sir? Yes. In fact, all of them, their stories are almost alike. Why? The same Holy Ghost. I don't know your own Holy Ghost that the day you got born again, the only thing you received was chanting. You did not receive sense. So when they say Bible study day, rather than attend Bible study and prayer meeting and the vigil, you go and sit down outside and then you be talking with your friend and say, oh, people are oh, deep, oh, deep. Have they heard the latest apostle in town? What you don't understand is you don't understand the workings of God. Most times, God will put you around conservative men because of the kind of grace he has put on you so that they have to temper. And then when your ministry will rise, people will see the balance and the purity. Are you understand what I'm saying? Don't be carried away and say, ah, there's no power. Have you asked them questions about their stories of the power of God? That they are not talking online does not mean there's no power. Are you here? Yeah. Because our generation believes more in visibility than in potency. Yeah. So if you can buy 10,000, no, 10,000 10, is like normal now. If you can buy like 55,700 on Instagram, and then we want to invite you, we need to check, hey, 55,000, uh, people are following him, but he bought them. And there is no testimony of Christ being formed in him. Is that not a waste of time? And so such men are like those fruits you see in the market. Have you gone to the market before and you, you wanted to buy uh, things for the dinner set and then they will show you red. The, those apples are more red than the normal apple. Have you seen it before? But you know those apples, you can't eat it. It's only for decoration on the dining. It's not apple. It's ah, but it's not apple. That's how some Christians are. A closer look reveals their barrenness. Why? They never ate anything. Tell your neighbor, eat something. Eat something. As newborn babes desire. Meaning, it has to, there has to be a desire. This lack of desire, one year in Christ, two years in Christ, three years in Christ, ten years in Christ, yet you are still looking for where Malachi is and your name is close to Malachi. Are you here? It's a problem. It means you are not committed to growth. You're looking for something else in the kingdom. And there are many things that if you look for in the kingdom, you will never find. Why? Because all that is flesh will never bring glory to God. Are we still together? Number two, are you ready for the word now? So four aspects of manifestation. Number one, the birth of sons. Number two, the recruiting, recruiting, recruiting of sons. The recruiting of sons. Now, if you remember very well, okay, well, some, how many of you have done NYSC? This is a time, this is your time to shine. NYSC. Okay, don't worry, you, you will do it in Jesus' name. But those of you that have done, let me see you, don't lie. It's your moment. Okay, let me test you. Uh, how many of you know Mami Market? Okay, those ones went. Those, if you did not know Mami Market, you didn't go. Well, you went somewhere else and sold your own khaki. Now, you know that um, in NYSC, um, as they begin to disperse us into various, you know, um, subgroups and things like that, there is a platoon, no, no, yeah, platoon, but there are some people that what they are doing is to match because they want to receive the governor. Is that true? Uh, some of us joined them, but they say our leg was too bent and we we're too short. Uh, they are not sure if we are matching straight. I say, but it's straight. They say it's not straight. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. It's not straight. Join another person. Now, that's how to recruit it looks like. You're going to go through rigorous exercises. Even though you qualify, they will now need to put you on certain tests in order to qualify you to be trained to now do the real assignment. Hear me. Recruitment and commissioning are not the same thing. That you entered NYSC and the first day you snapped and posted does not mean you have finished service. Have you finished service? So there are many Christians you just entered into the kingdom and you think that is all of it. There is so much more in God. There is so much more in God. The recruitment of sons. Now how do I know this? In Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. You will notice that Paul said something very crucial. He said was talking about God who separated him from his mother's womb. Is that correct? Now, when you go to Acts chapter 9, when Paul had division, huh? Jesus said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you... Now, Paul said he separated him from his mother's womb. Jesus said you are... Meaning, you are living in contradiction to the reason why you were born. Not born again yet, but what? Hmm. so that's the recruitment that was what happened to him and the lord broke him down because listen divine purpose always alters human ambitions so there's a way god is going to intercept you at certain points in your life you know when i was in university 
When I was in secondary school, I was very dull, extremely dull. I was so dull in secondary school that I never received prize. Some of you received prize. They gave you first. They gave you, I don't know how you got your own. They didn't give us. The only one, there was one, they gave me one. I even asked my parents, why did they give me this one? Because they said, ah, that one, they were just giving everybody to snap. I said, hey. But they didn't give me. I didn't win anything. One time, I had maybe 27th position. When I got to my, I said, you, I had 27. I said, well, really? Ah, eh, wow. <laughs> that you even tried. Out of 31, 20, ah, yeah, ah, okay, try. My brain was very dull. But I know something about the Holy Spirit. When it comes to rest upon you, it does not only affect your spirit, it affects your mind. Don't tell me I'm born again, I'm manifested as the son of God, and you are okay with mediocrity and being a dullard. No. The same Holy, the Holy Ghost was not only given for tongues. It was given to manifest as a son of God. Tongues is only one of the dimensions. There are many other things. Are we blessed? So I wanted to, I wanted to make a first class. When I gained admission, I wanted to make a first class and then be a lecturer in the university. Okay, no. Be a university lecturer in the United States of America. So that when I go back to our house in Lagos and go back to my school, I will tell them, I was a dull student. But now I'm a lecturer in the, not a lecturer in, oh, lecturer in the university. And then in the United States, of, um, I was planning. I, I was really making plans. Because then I found out that God was beginning to give me sense. But you know what? The Lord said to me, you, you will not lecture in the university halls. It does not mean that because you are born again, you abandon your... Some people got born again in school and did not graduate. Why? They did not understand the things we are teaching now. And so zeal went before sense. Never let anybody tell you, you will not need your certificate. Are we using it now? Never let a failure teach you how to succeed. They don't know how. Hmm. If you are hearing me, say, I hear you. Hmm. I hear you. Hmm. Number three. Number three. The making of sons. Number one, the birth of sons. Number two, are you being blessed tonight? Number one, the birth of sons. Number two, the recruiting of sons. Number three, the making of sons. I'll dwell with this on this just a little. If you remember very well in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. There is a making process. And like I often say, in the kingdom of God, speed is useless when destination has not been defined. Progress is a function of process. Because you can be running and you are running on a spot. The labor of the foolish weary at every one of them, for they do not know how to go to the city. Praise God forevermore. Making, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Making of sons. I think we should read that together. Read it, one to go. Be ye followers of me, even as I am. Look at, look at who is talking, Paul. Remember, Paul was part of those that supervised the martyrdom of Stephen. Paul is now telling believers that, brethren, follow me. Why? Transformation are taking place. Are you a Christian? You have received the gift of salvation, but there is no transformation. That's, that's misplaced priority. That's misplaced priority. It's not the time to weekly start your own ladies' ministry. It's not the time to quickly start your own uh, teenager's ministry. It's not the time to quickly start your own party girl child ministry. When you first got born again, find out and seek to understand the basics and the rudiments of Christianity or else I pray your labor will not be in vain. Hmm. Discipleship. Many people are not committed to discipleship. Many people only want mentors that can massage their egos and help them pass exams. So if you're a lecturer here, for example, you know that you have some students that always be coming around you, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy. But it's a lie. It's because they're in your department. And they don't want to fail. Psycho fancy, boot licking, and some of these things. Manipulations. It's common among we young people. But you see, discipleship is different. Because if any man will come after me, he must first deny himself. It's not about me. Take up his cross. Are you learning? No? And follow. Tell your neighbor, follow the Lord. I have two books there on discipleship. Following Christ and leading others. And I have another one, learn, live, and lead. There is a way to follow Christ. And there is a way to not follow Christ. Following Christ just because of all that you need is not enough. It is good to ask him. He's a good father. But that is not why you are a Christian. God does not exist to meet your needs. You exist to glorify him. Are you blessed? I hope I'm not harsh. Amen. 
I want to be very friendly. He that is friendly shall be invited another time. Amen. Amen. Romans, I don't know the Bible verse for that one. I just said it. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, for example. The making, discipleship. This is for as many, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Those ones are the sons of God. Meaning that, that you are born again, you are a son of God, but there is another level where it's about the leading of the Spirit. And unfortunately, many Christians do not understand what the leading of the Spirit is. What we think is, I just said, mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's go and meet you. Why? That brother, okay, so why do you want to meet you? Uh, maybe it's the one that, I, I think, God gave me, as he just is singing, I'm just having peace. Listen. Don't, listen, hear me. Don't copy paste people's encounters. You don't have a work with God. But when you want to do will of God, you don't know that there is a will of God that is superior to will of God. There's a will of God that is superior to marriage. It's his kingdom. Marriage is designed for kingdom advance. Are you here? If you do not seek first the Lord and his kingdom, and you want a partner, where are you going to? Because if the blind lead the blind. I know some sisters will wake up now and say, hey, he's talking, hey, it's our time. <laughs> and ladies, hear me. Uh, maybe this is just an advice. From, take it from a brother. If all you listen to is relationship sermon, you will never be a robust and healthy Christian. Some ladies, the only thing, they, how to get your life, how to, they can sit down three hours, they don't mind. Say yes, yes. But what about the basics, the other things? Say please. That's why I just like this pastor. Hey, a relationship. And on your WhatsApp, all the church programs, you have never shared flyer. But another apostle that is teaching relationship, you say, Kai, Kai, this is a blessing to this generation. What of your own pastor? That shows that you're a baby, baby Christian. Because where you are planted is where you should, your, your first, are you understanding? Yes, yes. Your loyalty, first. Maybe God is using me to speak to somebody, I don't know. Anyway. First Samuel chapter 22, we shall find out. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. After service, we will know because when some people don't smile, we know they are the ones. So watch out for those that don't. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. Now remember that there was a time David was being pursued. I don't know if you remember the story of Doeg and some of them. Now David ran to a cave called Adulam. Somebody say Adulam. And there were certain people that joined themselves with him. The Bible called them discontented men. Do we have, it? Do we have the text now? Please give me verse 2. They were in debt. Please read the CV of the men that were joined with David. One to go. And everyone that was in, number one, distress. And number two, everyone that was in debt. Number three, and everyone that was discontented. Number, okay, and then gathered themselves unto him. Look at them. Distressed, debtors, discontented. And these were kinds of men. And what happened? They joined themselves to David and followed process. Later in 2 Samuel, when the Bible would introduce them, he says, now this be the mighty men of David. And he began to list those men and their exploits. I'm praying that after a while, we will see the fruits of the word of God in your life. Amen. And not only that, you will serve your generation according to the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, so aspects of manifestation. Number one, the birth of sons. Number two, the recruiting. Thank you, of sons. Number three, the making of sons. Number four, the sending or commissioning of sons. The sending or commissioning of sons. If you look at Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. But when... The fullness is the word pleroma. The fullness. How many of you have put water in kettle before and then the water became hot? How many of you? At least. When, when it became hot, how did you know? There was what? A bop, bop, bop. And then after a while, if you leave it for long, what, does it, what happens? It begins to spill. Are you understanding? If you pump water in tank, after a while, you hear sound outside, meaning the tank is full. Is that correct? It says the fullness of time. Meaning that although Jesus was born, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, you will bring forth a son. You will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people 
from their sins. When Jesus was born, you would think that at five years old, he would say, children of God, I have come to save the people. Mm -mm. It was quiet. John the Baptist was doing the work, preparing the way. And then one day, because John was told that upon whom do you see the spirit descend, that one. And then on that day, when Jesus said, suffer it to be so, for now, that we fulfill all righteousness. As John baptized Jesus, the Bible says, glory to God, the heavens were open. A dove came, right? The spirit came in form of a dove, lighted on him, and there was what? A voice. And what did the voice say? This is my in whom all of it is still sonship, but there are dimensions to it. Are you understanding now? Commissioning. Commissioning has to do with a track record. And I think it is a demon that is really ravaging our generation. It's the spirit of haste. And premature exposure. We don't mind what it will take. They must know us. The question is, what's the day that must know you if you are not known by God? Jesus, I know. Ha, manifestation of the sons of God. Paul, I know. Imagine, you are known for singing, but demons don't respect you because there's no authority that you carry. David was playing the harp, all right, in the wilderness. People did not really see him. He was playing. The animals were noticing. But after a while, people began to notice. And one day, an evil spirit from the Lord rested upon uh, Saul. Is that correct? And the Bible says, when they were looking for who can help, they did not look for the viral people. They looked for a man with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And when David came, he did not fail. You know why? Mastery is very powerful. You can replicate the results over and over. David played, and the Bible says as he played, there was skill, but there was excellence, but there was anointing. As he played, the evil spirit could not withstand it. You, you have been playing since, you have been singing since, at living, doing reefs. How far? Amen. Let's go to another point, very quickly, as I prepare to wrap up. It's a word conference. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what does it mean to manifest as sons of God? Wherever I stop within the habit of my time, I believe it will be okay. The Spirit of God will enlarge the rest in our hearts. What does it mean to manifest as sons of God? Number one, especially because we have young people here, you need to listen to this. Number one, discovering purpose for living. Discovering purpose for living. It's part of the aspect of the manifestation of a son of God. There is a reason why God created you. There is a reason why God allowed your parents to give birth to you. Even if your parents said, we only wanted for you, you came, you are number six. You, five, we even say, okay, but you, we didn't want you. Some children have met me and they have said, their parents told them, you, we, we ah, plan, yeah. Ah, well, I plan for it. But alone, we plan for it. Because God will not allow you out of the hundreds or the thousands or the millions of sperm cells to enter into the ovary before everybody else and not have a plan. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, he says, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Meaning, ordination came before birth. But process is what will allow him to sustain the capacity to host what God was bringing. Are we blessed? Purpose. Purpose. I remember I read a book many years ago about, I can't remember how many years now, uh, The Purpose Driven Life. How many of you have seen that book? The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, right? In that book, he shared the concept, um, shape, S-H-A-P-E. Your, your spiritual gift, your heart attitude, all right? Your, your, your habits, your attitude, your personality, your experiences. He says all of these things can be indicators. But listen, if you do not have a work with God and you have skill, that does not mean that skill automatically becomes a call of God. Somebody may be ordained to be a university professor in order to lead many students to Christ, but because he can play guitar, say, I will, God said I will be the greatest guitarist in Nigeria. God did not say it. Don't be that Christian that thinks that the Holy Ghost always makes us have redundant brains. No. The Holy Ghost wants to use you in every sphere of influence for his glory. And that's manifestation of the sons of God. And it begins with purpose. It was Dr. Masmura of Blessed Memory that said, if the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse of it, is inevitable. Only God knows how many people are abusing their lives every day, doing the things that God did not ordain them to do, that they are not gifted to do, but because they want to fit in with others. When I was in secondary school, 
my friends were in science class. They said SS1 now, is he SS1 or SS2? Go and choose the department you want to be in. And then I said, all right, all the tall, fine young men, they are in science class. And all the beautiful ladies, they were in science class, confession time. And then I said, uh-uh, me too now. I want to be a science, I'm a science student too. When we started writing chemistry and physics tests, I began to have two. In fact, one time the man gave me minus. The man, the man was the man made me know that. Alolo, I will never forget his name. I never. For, I know if, if I see him anywhere in the world, I will recognize him. Some of you, listen. God is using certain circumstances to give you indicators that you are not aligned with His purpose, but you are stubbornly pursuing. Tonight is a night to have a rethink. And humbly go before the Lord and say, what will you have me do? Number two. Manifestation of the sons of God. Number two. What does it mean to manifest? Number two. Fulfilling destiny. And fulfilling destiny and surpassing mediocre expectations. I have mentored quite a very huge number of people who have made a first class by the grace of God. Yeah, nobody made a first class in my department. I didn't make a first class, but I was one of the best students by the grace of God. And I was to be retained as a graduate assistant. But because the Lord had said, you will not do that one, you know, I had to leave it. But I'm telling you, don't condone mediocrity. Don't be on fire in church. But you are something else in class. And then when they paste the result, everybody's looking for your matric number because they know that your result will not glorify God. That's a contradiction. Fulfilling destiny. Do you know what it means to wake up every day and you know that you are living for what you were born to do? It puts fuel in you when others are cowering and running away. You stay with it. Even though the road may be tough and it may be rough. And that's why in Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, the Bible says, David, after he had saved his generation by the will of God, according to the will of God, then he rested with his fathers. Fulfilling destiny. Number three. Are we getting blessed tonight? Don't worry, I'll wrap up. Once it's time, I'll wrap up. Number three. Walking in divine prophecy. You know, in Matthew, walking in divine prophecy. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 24. Matthew 26, 24. The Bible says, Jesus speaking to them. He says, and the son of man goeth as it is written of him. Let me ask you, what is written of you? Jesus said, lo, I come in the volume of books. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. What is written of you? Have you found what is written of you? Number four, maximizing your potentials. In fact, there is a book with that title, actually, by Dr. Masmuro. Uh, Rediscovering your potential, uncovering your potential, maximizing your potential, by Dr. Masmuro. Now, in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, you see what we call the parable of the talents, all right? And you see the stewards. One was given five talents. One was given two talents. And one was given one. There was nobody that was not giving anything. Everybody had something. And that tells you that to manifest as a child of God, because listen, everything in the hand of a man that is surrendered to God can be a weapon against the kingdom of darkness. The sling is enough. The guitar is enough. Because listen, whether David held the guitar or he held the sling, as long as the power of God was with it and the purpose of God was being pursued, he's going to do great things. I'm telling you, you don't need to be a singer to fulfill destiny. You must find out what God wants for you to do. And then with the skill set that God has given you, you can now begin to walk your way and labor into it. Not all gifts will stand before the pulpit to speak. In fact, I believe very strongly that there are ministry leadership gifts, but there are many other gifts of the Spirit that are not part of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Do you agree? When you go to Romans, all right, I think chapter 8 or chapter 12, you are going to see other gifts. They're going to see the gifts of administrations. Leadership. In fact, giving is actually a gift. Amen? Amen? There are some people, they need to pray a lot to be able to give something. Are you here? Number five, because of time. Number five. Walking in dominion over the power of darkness. Walking in dominion over the power of darkness. In Acts chapter 13, verse 6 to 11, you remember that the apostles were ministering one time in a region and a man called Bar Jesus came and he was trying to, you know, cause problems. And the apostle looked at him, stared in his spirit, and then he said, you will be blind for a season. That is power. Somebody say power. power. Not just I have power that is capable to burn the world, but there's nothing burning. 
Except you're in Domi. There's nothing money. Roommates are fornicating here and there. You are even living room for them. Say, Esha, she can't go. He no eda. He no eda. Esha, she ya. Your boyfriend is an ah. And then you use that mouth to stitch and say, Rake koko. She mama. What? <laughs> Dominion over the kingdom of darkness. When we were serving, one time we stepped on something in in Kogi. I served in Ogumabasa, Kogi State. And then somebody stepped on something, and then I also stepped on it. And the lady said, ah, my leg is about to swell. It will soon start swelling. This thing they call it, kiniko, kiniko. I said, listen, I don't know what they call it, but there is a name that I know. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name. So he said, in the name of Jesus, it will not affect me. Because consciousness, like I said, if people start telling you that you have malaria now, very soon, eh, you will sleep on the bed. Why? Consciousness. When you repeat it, some of you need to check what you have been listening to. The repetition of the wrong information will start becoming like truth in your heart. Are we learning? Number six. Number six, manifestation of the sons of God. What does he mean? Doing exploits. Daniel 11, 32. Those that do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know, glory to God. Do you know your God? The people that do know their God shall be, notice, strong. And on the basis of that strength, they will do exploits. Please play on strings so that I can wrap up. Play on strings. Are we getting blessed? There's so much. Wherever I will stop is good. And, and for example, if you want to see that, you see Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. You're going to find about four blessings there. And one of the ones that I like, he says, God will bless the work of your hands. I'm praying for somebody. That may God bless the labor of your hands. Amen. Because there is a way, can and the workings of darkness can make it look as if you don't know what you are doing. Some of you read a lot, but the more you read, the more you forget. Don't keep quiet about it and say, well, it doesn't matter. It does. It does. Take it to God in prayer. Talk to your pastors about it and rebuke that devil and tell your brain what to do. Listen, your brain can hear you. Everything created by God has ears. Because even the mountains, the little hills, when they saw the creator, they skipped like rams. That means they have eyes. Are you here? They can respond to their creator. Glory be to God forever. Number seven. Yeshua. I didn't say that I would not have spoken. Prosperity. 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 Children of God. Prosperity. You are in this program today. Part of it is because of prosperity. Is that true? Both spiritual and material. Is that correct? You are able to use the media gadgets because of financial prosperity. That's an aspect of it. Many of you are here today. Some of you got born again in this church. That's prosperity. You are the seal of the apostleship of your pastor. You are the proof that God called him because you heard the gospel under his ministry and you got saved. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Meaning that as your mind is renewed by the word of God, many things begin to seep in your mind that are part of the will of God for you. And then you begin to act based on it and then you begin to prosper. Glory be to God forever. Please let me know how many minutes I have so that I can wrap up. So that I don't keep you to your vision. Amen. Blessed are those that keep to time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Please let's celebrate the leadership. Let's celebrate the leadership. Thank you very much. I like this. Let me confirm. All right. Very good. Okay, let's go. Roadmap to manifestation. Increase your volume a little now. Increase your volume a little. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Awa olu ambe lori a ye mi o Ongbe mi fo Ongbe mi sare Awa olu ambe lori a ye mi o Ongbe mi fo Kalabasu ka tele ma sare Awa olu ambe lori a ye mi o Kilo nse o Ongbe mi fo 
Sare. Oh. Roadmap to manifestation number one. If you can pray in tongues, it's a good time. The power of the Holy Ghost is awesome here already. Number one, a robust, a robust, a robust and healthy knowledge of God. We will never settle for less, for we know there's more that's found in you. A robust and healthy knowledge of God. I already gave you Daniel 11:32. That those that do wickedly against the covenant shall live corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know they are God. Those ones, they will be strong. And then they will do exploit. Manifestation of the sons of God. Doing exploit, they are synonyms. Doing exploit in your career. Doing exploit in your marriage. Doing exploit in your ministry. Doing exploit in your finance. Doing exploit in your health. Doing exploits in your workplace. Can I prophesy over somebody tonight that in the name of Jesus, let the anointing for exploits find expression in your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oluwa, Oluwa, etobi loba, oh. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, healthy knowledge of God, as he thinketh in his heart, there is a way you are thinking about God that is making you behave the way you are behaving. There is a way to think about God that changes you from where you are to where you ought to be. There is something Moses knew about God. The Bible says now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law on Mount Horeb. And then he saw a bush that was burning, but the bush was not being born. And the Bible says, and God, Moses said, I will now turn aside to behold the great side why the bush is not born. And the Bible says, when God saw that Moses turned aside, then God spoke from the burning bush. And then as a result of the encounters, if Moses asked God, what name will I tell them? Who will I say sent me? And he said, tell them, I am that I am. So when he stood before Pharaoh and said to Pharaoh, I am has sent me. Pharaoh went to check the register of the gods. Osiris, Aku and the rest of them. Ah, this I am has not been registered. He does not know that there is a God that is superior to those who first wrote the register that he's using for his divination and social. His name is the eternal God. I am that I am. Moses knew him. Moses knew him. If you can sing it where you are. Moses knew Elijah said before God whom I stand there shall be no rain and there was no rain and James told us Elijah was a man subject to like passions like you and me Elijah was a man that had emotions that had feelings like you and me but he got to a point Elijah said listen there is a God that I have encountered that you do not know about on the day of adversity in the days of temptation in the days of trials in the days of persecution when your convictions are being tested I hope there will be something about God that you know that will help you to stand the test of time because those that know their weight upon the Lord shall renew their strength by gazing upon the light that beams from his glorious presence revelation and understanding comes to them and then they renew their strength and then they mount up they gather momentum they manifest as sons of God number two all right you can also add second Timothy 2 15 I'm, I'm trying to rush because I must keep to time study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth many Christians have been deceived even older people have been deceived why false prophets everywhere false teachers everywhere twisting and perverting the truth of the word of God why they too did not have a solid foundation there is nothing great that you build upon sand it will not it will not last number two an understanding of the will of God an understanding of the will of God in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 20 he says be not unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is notice he continues and then he says and be not drunk with wine when it is excess but be filled with the Holy Ghost meaning your continual infilling of the spirit 
gives you access to understanding consistently the will of God. I do not believe that a Christian must continue to experience up and down every day of your life. No. You should go upward and forward by the power of the Spirit. For the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more, more. I don't know if I'm talking about you. More and more. It should get better because we're in the kingdom of God. You thrive no matter what. You flourish by the power of God. Somebody say, I flourish. By the power of the Holy Spirit. No more backwardness. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The king's domain. The will of God. The purpose of God. The plan of God. And his righteousness. His way of doing things. Following his principles. And all these things shall be added unto you. Let me share a simple story. I know somebody who their family everybody wanted to travel out of the country but they were unable to travel out of the country but somebody among the family members that was seeking God and trying to fulfill the purpose of God in the corner that he was they paid an all expense paid trip to do everything he was to do abroad and come back with a plan to go again he did not spend the time in fact proof of funds he did not have it somebody had to give it to him that is called seeking first the kingdom Many of us have put our desires above the will of God. And we are wondering why God is not backing us. God does not back men. God backs his will. Any man that stands in his will, God backs him. Are we still together? Somebody say, okay, so what is the will of God? Find out in scripture. Okay, what is the will of God? Holiness is the will of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. Holiness is the will of God. Your sanctification is the will of God. Your separation from the things of the world is the is the will of God first John 2 15 love not the word and are the things that are in the word if any man loves the word the love of the father is not in him and these are the things that are in the world the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life they are not of the father they are not they are not of the father number three we see more love more power the truth of your word like never before revealed we see more power more love the truth of your word like never before revealed we see the glory of god revealed the gifts of god displayed meeting every need i see the glory of god revealed the gifts of god displayed meeting every need number three an understanding of the gifts of god in you child of God I've come to announce to you tonight as I prepare to wrap up there is the gift of God in you you have the gift of God in you the grace of God is upon your life I will never be the same I've taught your grace my life must change I will never be the same I've taught your grace the gift of God in you it separates you from your peers it separates you from unhealthy competition why you know what you carry do you know what you carry people can do all kinds of things but do you know what you carry do you understand the gift of God in you and have you allowed the anointing that brought that gifting to teach you because the anointing can teach you everything as an undergraduate university the anointing taught me many things and if you're lecturers and I know some of us are you know into the academia you know what I'm saying some of you will write your PhD dissertations. The anointing will teach you. Are you here? The anointing is not meant to die inside church premises. The anointing is to take it to the world out there. Wait. It's darkest the most. And then you shine the light of God. Because no man lighted a lamp and keeps it under a cushion. It's wickedness to do that. If the light of God is upon your spirit, with time, you cannot be hidden for long. Why? Arise. Shine. For your light is come. And the glory. And the glory and a separate yeah. the glory of god is risen upon you though darkness may cover the earth that's their own lot and cross darkness the people but upon you like the children of israel experiencing caution even in the wilderness a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night the children of israel were moving and then they crossed the red sea the egyptians are saying to do so they drowned why they understood that there is a god that was with them his name is jehovah yahweh is above Yahweh Sabah Yahweh Sabah Strama Yahweh The Lord of us The Lord of us This King forever Yahweh Sabah Yahweh 
fire. The Lord is speaking to my spirit now. And he says, I should declare over somebody here, may you enter into rest. May you enter into the rest of God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God forever. The gift of God. The gift of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. The gift of God. The gift of God. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. Silver and gold I don't have to give to you. But such as I have. There is something. There is something that the Lord has made available. Give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The gift of God. Say with me. I have the gift of God in me. I like the way you are saying it over here. But how about us over here? I have the gift of God in me. It is activated tonight. Finding expression. And I manifest as a son of God. Bringing glory to God. Edifying human beings. And living a better life. I go from glory to glory. I go from strength to strength. I have power with God. I have power with men. And I have prevailed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sit down for two more minutes and then two more minutes and we'll pray for five minutes and be out of your faces. We be old until we are from. We carve out. Second Corinthians 3 18 says, We all be holding us in the glass, the glory of God. We are changed into the same. You cannot manifest as a son if you do not continue to behold the Father. Number four. Hi, the waters are still number number four, right? An understanding of times and seasons. Don't worry, I have nine. I'll just share two more, and then we are good. Don't worry, it's good. An understanding of times and seasons. In First Chronicles chapter twelve and verse thirty-two, the Bible speaks of the sons of Issachar that had an understanding of the times and seasons, and they knew what the children of Israel ought to do, and their brethren were at their command. You cannot be in command because you are shouting, I'm a commander, I am a god, I am a goddess, I am a chihuahua. Forget about that understanding. It is understanding that makes men stand out. Understanding. And guess what? God is able to give you understanding. He's able to make all grace abound toward you so that you, having all sufficiency, may be able to abound. Somebody say with me, I have understanding. Of the times and of the seasons. Do you know the times that you are in now? Some of you in your life now, the season you are in is different from the season of your neighbor but you generalize everything too much and so you are comparing yourself with your neighbor and the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves they are not wise your, your neighbor is succeeding they are doing well in school their parents are giving them pocket money but your own is looking tough you must know god our family the way we grew up things don't worry what season are you in now you know in time explanation in scripture there are two we have chronos the chronological time and then we have kairos appointed time opportune time the reason why people miss their opportune time is because the general chronological time they were not preparing and you see it is when the clouds are full of rain that they empty themselves when you should learn character you are not learning character then you will get to embassy and you are still wearing rib chain and gallivanting and say what well, be one that come out for me this oh thing you see you are not ready why are they not giving me job? Why are they not giving me money? Why are lecturers not liking me? Listen, you don't need to sleep with any lecturer to like you. If you understand how to interact with elders, you will have your way. Are you learning something? Yes. Some of us, it's just courtesy that we need to open the door. But we will never greet anybody first. If nobody greets you first, then they don't deserve your greeting. Are you? Why? Are you? Ask anyone say, why are you? God show mercy. Times and seasons. That sometimes you just feel like praying. That's not the time to now say, no, I want to watch Jumong. I want to watch Netflix. Forget about Netflix now and set to destiny. It is those that have fulfilled destiny that can have time to sit down with Netflix. Bishop Oedipo will say one away. He says, any I woe. Those that they are watching, they don't have time to be. No, it's you that is watching them. Can I pray for somebody tonight that in the name of Jesus, may God help you to adjust your priorities. 
All right, I'll wrap up now so that we can pray. Are we blessed already? Times and seasons. All right, let me just give you one more. Let me see the one to give you. All right, last one. Last one. Partnership with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you partner with the Holy Spirit? I'll give you two things and then we'll pray. Number one, prompt obedience. If you remember Acts chapter 8, when persecution scattered the church abroad, there was a man named Philip. The Holy Ghost led Philip and he went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. The city was full of joy. There were miracle signs and wonders taking place. And in the midst of a revival, the Holy Spirit said, Philip, now go and join yourself to that chariot. Why? A yielded and a broken man is the kind of man that God will use in the last days. Not an arrogant man. Some of us want to play king of the hill. But in this kingdom, there is no king of the hill. There is only one king that reigns supreme eternally. is the almighty God. And he alone will deserve all the glory in all of eternity. Because he owns you and everything that is in you. Are we blessed? There are thrones. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are hills. But only Yeshua will reign forever. In his kingdom there is no So number one, prompt obedience. Take the second one so that we can pray. Number two, fervent prayers and anointed worship. Fervent prayers and anointed worship. And we'll do that for five minutes and then we're good. Remember, in Acts of the Apostles, there is a lot. From chapter 2, you see a lot. Prayers, 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 prayers. 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 9. Samuel, prayers, prayers. Matthew 17, 22. There are some things that will not live your life except by prayer and fasting. And there are some things that will not enter your life except by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting, you are cultivating the discipline. Discipline, perseverance, endurance. Not that they will call fasting and then you will be eating gala outside. Then you come and say, oh, I speak in other tongues. I speak in capital. No. You are building stamina for days to come. You don't know whether God will need you in Iraq and you will know it for seven days. How will you survive? In the name of Jesus Christ. Fervent prayers. James chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. He prayed again. If you pray the first time, nothing changed. Pray the second time, nothing changed. Pray the fourth time, nothing changed. Have you prayed seven times? If you have prayed seven times, have you prayed seven hundred times? Keep praying. Why? Because there is a God in heaven that hears and he answers. And if you are praying a lot and you are not hearing anything, wait a little. Meditate. In meditation, your spirit will be open. As you fellowship with the word, your word will come. As you attend church service, your word will come. As you do not despise prophesying, your word will come. Can I pray for somebody? Your word has come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's rise. Ebenezer, Ebenezer. Ay, 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 ay. Ebenezer.
to pray and I say in the name of Jesus say in the name of Jesus I want us to declare together say in the name of Jesus I receive grace tonight to manifest as a son of God in destiny open your mouth and pray now is your time to manifest the purpose and the plan of God for your life you will not miss the mark you will fulfill the purpose the plan oh of the spirit to activate the workings of God in you. Paul says tear up the gift of God that is in you by the laying on of, of the hands of the presbytery. Please lift your hands. You are going to receive a fresh anointing. Some of you some things are looking stale. The challenge is seeming to overcome. But no greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to steer the anointing of the Holy Ghost. If you can pray in other tongues it's a good time to pray. Adelo Beratula Kwambataya Parade Obregedela Azabia Makande Lemondeha Aradatatatama Ebaye Obaya Yabo Sabiatala Rambake Pero Descobe Adonde Kabuatala Woshamahaya Alright One more minute and I'm out of this place The Holy Ghost is awesome here already And I see the Lord pouring fresh oil upon people Pouring fresh oil Something fresh from the throne of grace you will not be tired, you will not be weary, you will not be discouraged, you will not be distracted. Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes. One minute and then I'm done. Pharaoh me. Some of you are asking God for encounters. That's what you need in this season. You need a fresh encounter as it was something greater resident in your spirit man like fire like fire like fire shut up in your bones have the message like fire shut up in your bones the power of god is moving now the power of god is moving now like fire like fire like fire great grace and glory great grace and glory, great grace and glory. Holy, spirit. holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit I count one to seven the power of God is going to touch you and something will shift in your life Holy Spirit by your anointing let it rest upon these ones one two three four five please help them six seven take in the name of Jesus let the hand of God be upon you something fresh from the throne of grace I hear the Lord speaking about the oil of gladness I think there is somebody here you are discouraged you are disappointed 
the result that you have been seeing, the things that have been happening in your life are contrary to what God told you. Let God be true and every man a liar. I stretch my hands towards you again and I declare in the name of Jesus, I minister strength to you, strength to you, strength to you, strength to you. Hold on, brother. He's the saving strength of his anointed. Elias, let the giant in you arise, 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 arise. I speak prophetically. Arise, 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 arise. Patake, pakatea, hold on, little. Holy Spirit. Deliverance is real. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And dear people here under the sound of my voice, even right now, struggling with strange addictions, things that you cannot explain. You have wanted to break free, but it's looking difficult. Clash the symbols. As I count one to three, the ministry of the Holy Ghost supplies strength to you now. One, two, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is working now, he's working now, he's coming strong upon your spirit. Giving you capacity to overcome. Three, three. Now receive, receive, receive the power of the Spirit. Receive the grace of God. Aha. Yes, Yaka. I am. At the same time, I see the Lord breaking yokes. I see the Lord breaking yokes. I see yokes breaking. Things are being shattered in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing things give way. The Lord is saying, Give way, give way. Lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lift up your everlasting doors that the King of Glory might come in. The Lord has stepped into that situation. You are going to experience the glory of God. Ay, 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 ay.
you praying? The Holy Ghost over the message you have received. Likamanda baranda da da balaka shanda bana mana marusi beleke te bala mana manos. That I live here to manifest all that God has wired in me. I live here to manifest all that God has wired in me. Erodi kamanda bala masha bala koparanda da baha. Erubi le de kamanda bala yanda di kepele do baranda manos. Erubi le kanda bala shakata baranda da ba. I begin to stretch. I begin to stretch. I begin to stretch. Ikumi da bala kata bala baranda da ba. Likupele de de kusa ba. I manifest all that God has wired in me. In the name of Jesus, I keep beholding Jesus until I become all that He has in store for me. I keep beholding Jesus. I keep beholding Jesus. I keep beholding Jesus until His image is fully formed in me. I come and the belendo beleka da balama na manos. Esumi la randa da balaka tapa na manos. Jesus, how we celebrate Jesus? How we celebrate Jesus? How 
we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate him? All right, all right. I believe you have been blessed. I invite Pastor Yobami. Wow. 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 What a wholesome three days it has been. How many of you acknowledge that? Day one, day two, day three, God has been awesome. Ah, somebody shout hallelujah. Wow. 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 Words fail me to acknowledge God for his great and mighty works in our midst. He indeed prepared the minister for us. You know, <laughs> as Pastor Orari Waju was speaking certain things, I was like, yes sir, yes sir, you know the people in this place. Yes, 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 you know them, you know them. It was like, it, it was like it, the Holy Spirit was extraying through this room. And if you received your word or you received an instruction today, the best thing is to follow. Blessed is the man that does not just hear the word, but does it. That is where the blessedness comes in. Blessed are the years that hear this wonderful news of God, the word and the revelations of God. I'm here standing before the 